This is the Financial Beat, helping you hit all the right notes in your financial plan. So sit back as we strike up the band. The Financial Beat with Logan Sadler starts now. Hey, welcome to another exciting edition of the Financial Beat. Logan Sadler is here. Logan, of course, is the Vice President and Chief Investment Officer at Regary Financial. And we're going to talk about retirement, getting to it and through it. My name is Ron Stutz. And Logan, how you doing, my friend? I tell you what, Ron, I'm doing uh, doing great today and looking forward to a great show on some retirement education. Got a lot of good stuff to talk about today. And we'll get to that in just a second. But I just wanted to tell everybody your phone number so they can go ahead if they like, go ahead and, and call that number and set up a time to have a conversation with you about their financial situation. That number is 888-823-PLAN, 888-823-PLAN. Uh, why would you call that number? to get a discovery visit. That is kind of a getting-to-know-you conversation that won't cost you anything. Hey, interesting story out of uh, Portugal. I've never been to Portugal, have you? No, I have not. It's uh, probably on the list, though. (laughs) A small town in Portugal was recently absolutely overwhelmed by 2.2 million liters. That's about 580,000 gallons of red wine running through the streets. (laughs) (laughs) After two large tanks burst, the wine poured out into the streets, creating a red river throughout the town. Can, Can you imagine that situation? No, I mean, that's pretty crazy. That's got, I mean, obviously, a lot of us know wine can be rather expensive, so I'm assuming that was a lot of money lost there. Of course, that's where the financial advisor in me goes first, right? But yeah, um, yeah. other than that, that is, that is pretty crazy when you, if you would be just sitting there and didn't know what happened. You see to see, to see a red river running down, right? You'd be a little concerned. Yeah, and I'm uh, envisioning uh, two large tanks bursting with wine. What, what is this, like... Uh, uh, boxed wine or something? Yeah, that's true. I didn't know it was like a, a beer keg or something right on the yeah. back of a truck. <laughs> I didn't. I don't know if they were in individual. I guess they weren't in individual bottles. They were just in these huge tanks, which is kind of I don't know. Kind of turns me off to think about that. But uh, you know, <laughs> one of the strange things that happens. Hey, let's talk about four hundred one ks. And okay. I know that's a big topic of conversation around your office with your clients. Mm-hmm. And uh, when you're working at a company and contributing to the 401k there, your money is essentially stuck in that 401k plan until you have a qualifying life event that allows you to get the money out. And my question is, what are the most common qualifying events that people ought to be aware of? Yeah, there's quite a few of them, but I think first off, one of the biggest qualifying events that most people are, are uh, maybe not aware of or maybe are, but is the 59 and a half rule, right? So once you're age 59 and a half, you are now eligible to move your 401k out into an IRA, whether that's probably via a rollover. So you could roll it over from the 401k over to an IRA, and then you know, you'd have a lot of options and things like that you could use, and I'm sure we're going to dive, dive into that further. Um, but there's also some other stuff, like maybe if you're getting divorced, right, um, like a quattro, um, you're able to move that over to an IRA, uh, maybe a new job. If you leave the employer and you go to a new, uh, a new place to work, you could actually roll over your old 401k. Um, there's a lot of those different types of options that might come up throughout the years where you are eligible to uh, look at some of those opt-out options. I know when you hit one of those events, it's really important to assess what you should be doing with your money at that point. Mm-hmm. And for each of these four options, and I'm going to mention here, uh, I want you to give us an example of a time when that would be the appropriate decision for someone. First of all, first scenario, uh, would you, you know, you might decide just to leave it there exactly where it is. When is that, when is that a good situation for you? Yeah. Like you were saying, I mean, most of the time you don't really have to move your 401k. I mean, not of the time you probably are, you probably can leave it there unless you know maybe the company closed that's holding it or whatnot. But there's some other reasons too. But one of the reasons why I typically you know wouldn't recommend to leave it there is because you know a lot of the times I ask, I ask clients okay, and I meet with people every day and uh, most of the time it goes very similar with when we talk about the 401k right they go well you know what uh, Joe or Sue or, or or Dave or whoever at work told me just to pick these three or four options and I'll be fine right um, or I just like the name and the way they sounded or I've heard of this company before so I pick that fund right <laughs> uh, put it this way most of us don't know a lot about our 401ks or, or really how those funds are invested mm-hmm. so you know you, you can leave it there that is always an option but the problem with it is is a lot of people aren't 
getting the guidance and education they need to really feel like they're investing and investing successfully um, for their retirement. So those are some things you kind of want to look at and making sure that you understand how it's invested. That's very uh, a very interesting topic again when it comes up when I go over risk reports or, or you know asset allocation or how are we invested. It's very interesting. Most people aren't really sure how they're invested in the 401k. They just know they have X, Y, and Z. So that's why typically in most cases, Ron, when we're meeting with people, unless you're you know, a pretty savvy individual, and even with that, um, you probably have access to maybe some better funds or some better investments outside the 401k in some cases than you might there. So it's definitely a good time to kind of take a look and uh, meet with an advisor like us. Or if, again, if you're very confident you can do it yourself, that's great too. But you kind of want to look and see what other options are out there to see if you could best uh, get those get those retirement accounts working for you for your retirement. Okay, you have that 401k, and there may come a time in your life when you want to withdraw it as income. You want to use that money. In what case is that a good scenario? Yeah, you know, that's a tough one because I would say I, the, the real reason I'd say is probably almost never, right? But yeah. um, it's the first temptation, right? I see it all the time where, oh, I worked at this uh, place for 10 years. I got 20000 in my 401k, but, you know, I probably could use it to redo the kitchen or to buy a new car or we could all come up with reasons of why we need money, right? I mean, that's that's the easy thing to do. Um, so I would say most of the time you do not want to touch it. Most of the time you want to do it as a rollover, um, set the money in an IRA or into other types of investments to where you could let those sit and grow for your retirement. Now, I understand that sometimes when you when one of these qualifying events happens, it means you might have lost your job or or some things like this might have happened. So there is, there, that money is there where if you didn't need to take some of it to get by a very, very hard time. And again, I'm saying that with quotations. You can't see me, but I put my fingers in the air, right? It's got to be a hard time. Yeah. Not just, like I said, you wanted a new car, or wanted to redo your kitchen, but, you know, hey, I've lost my job and I'm, I need to pay the bills, right? That's the only time I would say where it might make some sense or it might be worth a conversation to see if that's the best place to go. And in, in most cases, it's not, but it's at least worth the conversation to, to uh, see if that makes any sense or not. Well, in some of those extreme cases, you have actually told somebody that they would probably be better off doing that. You know, that doesn't happen very often. No. Uh, How about uh, a decision to roll it to a new 401k plan? I mean, how often does that happen? And is that a good idea? Yeah, you know, there, there's some pros and cons to that. So for like you were saying, for those of you guys that are that aren't don't understand what he was saying. So basically, if you have a current 401k, and you have an old 401k, you can roll that old 401k into your current 401k. That way, um, you know, they're all at one company, there is some benefits to that. That way, you could at least keep track of it, you know where it's at, right? I have heard a lot of people say, I used to have this old 401k, it was over at oh, was it Fidelity, Vanguard, or where, where was it, right? <laughs> and, uh, so by rolling it into your current one, you do help eliminate that fear and uh, obviously that obstacle. But I would say the problem with some 401ks, and again, a 401k for most people is still a really great place to put money. The only downside is if you're eligible to be outside the 401k, like an old 401k or a rollover or things of that sort, you just have access to a lot more investment options, right? Inside the 401k, you get um, you know, a few different investment options. And so typically by rolling it to an IRA, you probably would have more flexibility to kind of get a little bit more of a customized uh, investment plan for your risk tolerance. You've got more choices, right? Absolutely. Yeah. What about a case of, uh, you know, you hear about some people uh, taking their 401k and, and, and rolling it over into an IRA. Uh, when is that an advantage? Yeah, I would say a lot of the times when you are eligible to do that, uh, rolling it over to an IRA is typically a great way to go. Um, but again, you want to make sure just just an IRA is just an account type, right? Now we still got to pick investments inside the IRA. Um, so we want to be very clear about how that's invested and what the goal is for that money. Is it to be you know conservative, more aggressive, uh, more diversified, or what are we using it for, right? So we still want to understand um, how that's going to be invested and how that's going to be working for us for the next 5, 10, 15, 20 years, however long we are away. Uh, from retirement. So there's still a whole world out there of different investments that we want to make sure that we're um, either working with somebody that we trust to help put together that plan and help guide us that way, or making sure if you're doing it yourself, you're, you're really doing the, the job you need to be to educate yourself and making sure it's really in the best investments for you moving forward. This is a mighty uh, wide-ranging topic here, and I'm sure that if any listeners out there would like to ask you some more questions about 
401ks and about qualifying events. You'd be glad to sit down and talk with them. And mm-hmm. What else are you going to talk about when somebody makes that first phone call to your office and you actually get on the phone with them or, or you start your conversation? Yeah, great point. And like you said earlier, Ron, I mean, anybody that out there that has an old 401k or has one of these qualifying events where maybe you're over 59 and a half or, or have some options where now you could roll over your 401k, um, it's definitely worth giving us a call and having a conversation and seeing if we um, can't get together and, and really help you show you some of the options out there that might might be a better situation for you now and for long term. And like you said, Ron, really what we pride ourselves here on our firm is really taking the deep dive into your retirement plan. So many people out there say, I have an advisor or I have a broker or I have an insurance agent or whatever it is, right? And they might just have one person or whoever that just kind of picks some investments for them. But really where we go at our firm, we take it a step further. We want to understand your financial plan, right? And a lot of people out there might not have a retirement plan, or maybe they're getting closer and they know they need to get one. And that's really where our firm would step in. And we go through, you know, how do you envision retirement? What type of income are we going to need in retirement? How's our budget looking? What does our income need to be to be able to retire? As well as going over taxes. Taxes play a huge role in retirement and understanding, are there different tax advantage savings we could be doing now, be doing later, uh, be doing Roth conversions, whatever it might be, to make sure that we're really setting ourselves up well for a retirement that's going to be able to meet our needs, but also be efficient to last the next 20 or 30 years of our retirement. 888-823-PLAN is your number to call if you'd like to have a conversation with Logan Sadler. It is just that easy. Call that number today. Leave a message with your name and phone number. You will get a call back, and then you can set a time to talk to Logan. And again, no cost, no obligation for this. That's 888-823-7526. But an easy way for you to remember it is by using the word PLAN. Uh, That's 888-823-PLAN. And remember that Logan Sadler works with all three generations of Client families at Regary Financial and would love to sit down and have a conversation, get to know you, you get to know him. 888 823 Plan. You're listening to The Financial Beat with Logan Sadler, Regary Financial, wherever you are in Southern California today. Thank you very much for being with us. I'm Ron Stutz. We'll be right back. It's getting to know you time. We talk about a lot of interesting things on this show, and uh, one of the things that we have discussed from time to time is what's on your bucket list. What do you want to do? What do you want to achieve in your life? And Logan, I'm going to turn it on you here. What is on your bucket list that you have not yet achieved? What's funny is this is actually, I thought about traveling first thing when I thought about this. Yeah. And it's funny because I loved uh, people that you know either know me or listen to the show a lot. I love to hike. I love the outdoors. I love golf. I love surfing. I love the ocean, right? Yeah. And so what's funny is I've been to a lot of places. I've been very blessed to do a lot of, a lot of fun traveling. I've never been to Hawaii. Ah, yeah. Right? And every, everything I just mentioned is basically like Hawaii in a nutshell from what I hear. So it's funny, That's uh, I actually had a trip planned in 2020, and we all know everything got kind of canceled then, so I, we have not rescheduled, and I've never, I've just never been. And so it's one of those places I'm just dying to go to, because it sounds like it's got a little bit of everything I love, and, and so I kind of turned that over to traveling, Ron. Folks, uh, one of these days, uh, Logan Sadler is going to star in the new edition of Hawaii Five-O, you know, <laughs> he's, or, or Magnum P.I., or whatever the case may be. You know, I, you got a pretty <laughs> well-rounded background as far as your traveling is concerned but that's a that's a good one a lot of people have that aspiration they want to go to hawaii at some point yeah i I mean i'd I'd love a lot of people say italy or you know a lot of these cool places which those all sound great but yeah yeah, hawaii just kind of sounds like the mecca for everything i like to do um again could be could be a total uh you know let down when i get there or it could be everything i ever wanted who knows (laughs) (laughs) you're listening to the financial beat with logan sadler and that's on his bucket list what's on yours we'll be back in just a moment Hi, I'm a cleverly devised personification of Wall Street. I'm one wild roller coaster ride away from wreaking havoc on your investments. And I love to mess with your emotions. If you're not properly diversified, you can bet I'll keep you up all night thinking about me. If you want to keep me off your mind, you really need a trusted advisor who will look after your best interests. You also need a custom-designed financial plan that will protect you from market volatility. Otherwise, when I take a plunge, I'll send you scrambling through your filing cabinet, hoping you were well prepared. Don't wait for turmoil to hit. In Southern California, call Logan Sadler and the Regary Financial Team at 
888-823-PLAN. That's 888-823-7526. One, two, three, five! When musicians are performing, they typically need someone to count them into each song. Without that count in, the musicians might be out of sync and the song could fall apart. It's similar to your financial plan. All of your investments must be in sync, working towards your financial goals. Keep listening to the financial beat and learn how to make sure that your investments are playing together perfectly. We're back now with more of the financial beat. Ron Stutz along with the inimitable Logan Sadler, 888-823-PLAN. Uh, by inimitable, I mean often imitated but never duplicated. It's impossible to duplicate this guy. <laughs> Logan, you do such a great job, and I uh, always love doing this radio show with you. 888-823-PLAN is your number to call. 888-823-PLAN. You can have a conversation with Logan Sadler that's cost-free and obligation-free. Dreaming the dream so you can live the dream. What in the world is that all about? Before oh, you it sounds can, deep. <laughs> <laughs> it does. Before you can live the retirement dream, you have to figure out what the dream actually looks like in the first place. I think this is going to be fun to talk about this. Let's talk about yeah. some of the things that you need to dream about. Uh, let's say that, you know, you sit down one day and you have a conversation with Logan, and Logan says to you, who are you going to hang out with when you're retired? And describe your social circle, uh, if you would. That might be a little more difficult to answer than you think it might be. Yeah, absolutely. And I, and I think that kind of is a good question to ask uh, for retirement planning, right? Because I think a lot about who you hang around and things like that kind of determine about what you'll probably be doing in retirement, right? Those of us that are, are very active and very go-getters and, and very antsy and <laughs> like to stay busy, we probably hang around people that do the same thing, right? So um, that could also uh, influence the spending and, uh, and how active and things like that we stay in retirement. And there could be a lot of uh, pros and cons to that, right? I, I have a you know, one client of mine who actually moved to a uh, retirement community, and uh, it was a very um, active and very uh, expensive uh, group, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, they ended up spending way more on a monthly basis for trips or, or food or whatever it might be than they probably had ever planned on, right? Um, because of the circle that they were around, right? It doesn't make things bad or good, just, just understanding how some of those things can kind of play a role. Um, and I think also hanging around an active group is super important, right? Where I, I've seen some uh, some uh, clients of ours or even friends of ours that are that are clients where they'll retire and uh, they'll get into these groups where they might travel or they might go play pickleball or they might play golf or they might do whatever it is, right? Might might be walking or whatever whatever it might be, and that keeps them a lot more active than they might have been if they just did things on their own, right? If they didn't yeah. have that group and that support system to make them get off the couch, right, or make them get out of the house and and to go do things. So I think that could that could play a huge role in your retirement plan. Boy, pickleball has really come a long way, hasn't it? <laughs> Gosh, it's everywhere, right? I mean, it's it's basically like if you don't play if you don't play golf or pickleball nowadays, I feel like I don't know what what you do, right? That's all you hear advertisements for nowadays. I don't think I ever heard of pickleball until five or six years ago. Maybe it's just every everybody doing it now. It is crazy. Yeah, I think another important thing to think about is oftentimes when you're working every day, your social circle you kind of hang out a lot with people that you know from work and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And after you retire you may not be close to those folks. So, you know, it may be a whole different scenario. Uh, yeah, that's true. Another thing, and, and we do this a lot at my house, but the question is, uh, after you retire, where are you going to eat? How often will you <laughs> eat at home? And how often will you eat out? You might really have more time and, and everything else to, to go out to eat a lot, but that can get expensive. Yeah, it can. I mean, there's a reason uh, there, there's a lot of local diners out here by us, you know, like in like Abbey's or, or some of these local diners out in our Hemet area or even, you know, by our uh, Redlands office where mm -hmm. people just kind of uh, gravitate towards them, right? And I'd say there's a reason why you see more of a senior presence at places like that, right? And the reason is because we're all used to, you know, you have kids and things like that in the house. You're used to cooking for three, four or five people. And, uh, you know, you're kind of on the go, so you just kind of make things along the way. But when you're retired, you're kind of like, well, it's, it's just me and the wife, or maybe it's just me. I, I'm just going to go grab some breakfast, right? Or I'm going to go grab something. It's easier than making it. And uh, also, it's, it's nice to get out and enjoy the social circle of maybe eating out and going to have some interactions and things, right? Which is great. But what does that, off, what does that also do, Ron? That means the cost of the food that you're spending or the cost of money you're spending on food exactly. is probably going to be higher, right? Yeah. Um, 
and I know me and you have talked about this before. We both kind of uh, we're both guilty of enjoying a nice meal out, right? And, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and uh, which is totally fine. But the other thing is, is you have to factor in that your cost for things like that might be a lot more than you might have thought of, right? I know a client where I was talking about this with them, and he started laughing. He said, "You know, it's funny. Is for the first time ever, me and my wife ate out for three meals straight. Right? <laughs> we had <laughs> breakfast, we had lunch, and then we had dinner. And we thought, wow, we probably should only eat out once a day, right? So." It's funny because things like that can happen rather quickly and you just kind of get adjusted to it. And it's important to kind of understand where you, uh, where you see yourself, uh, you know, just spending money in, in those areas in retirement. You're listening to The Financial Beat. And again, your number to call if you'd like to get in touch with Logan Sadler at Regary Financial is 888-823-PLAN. That's 888-823-7526. But use the word plan. Helps to remember it that way. In fact, go ahead and write it down if you would. 888 888- a two three plan. We're talking about uh, living the dream. You're retired, and it's important to think about. You know, you got all this time now. You don't have to go to work. What activities will your average day consist of? I, I would say that it would be helpful for everybody listening to this show. Just think about that for a moment. What are you going to do all day? Yeah, absolutely right. I mean, it's one of those things where. You know, Saturday and Sunday when we're working, right, we're home, right? So we're, we maybe we mow the yard, maybe we uh, trim the trees, maybe we pull some weeds, maybe we clean the house, do the dishes, clean the counters, right? All, all that fun stuff <laughs> that we all have to do sometimes. Really? But that's we do a lot of that in two days, right? So now all of a sudden we're retired, and every day is a Saturday or Sunday, right? So what are you going to spend your time doing? And also, what do you what do you want to spend your time doing, right? That's the nice time is is you actually have an idea, and you actually it's the first time in your life for in a, in a long time where you probably have a choice over what you want to do throughout the day. And so, finding those activities where you want to leverage your day, and what do you want your day to consist of, right? One of our clients who came on board last year, uh, he cracks me up, right? He was he's used to getting up super early, right? He always got up about three o'clock in the morning, went to work for you know thirty forty years, and Basically, that was his life, right? He worked his butt off, raised some kids, did, did the thing a lot of us do, right? And in his retirement, he cracks me up because he still gets up at 3.30 in the morning. Oh, wow. And he goes for like a four or five mile walk every day, right? Mm. And and the best part about it, though, Ron, is you'll probably love this, where he gets home, you know, about, what, about 5.30 or so, maybe 6 o'clock, depending on how long the walk is, and then he'll take a nap, right? <laughs> 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 he'll nap from like six to eight, he said, or six to seven or something, right? But his body's just so used to getting up and he didn't want to, he loves the feeling of getting up early, but he doesn't have to stay up, right? He can kind of do what he wanted to do and he got his exercise in for the day. Um, but you know, that's kind of how he charts his course out to where he kind of figures out what he wants to do after that walk. Maybe it's take a nap, maybe it's not, but it's funny how uh, I found that very, very comical because you know, it's funny to get up that early, but then, hey, you got your exercise in, why not take a little, little snooze and, and catch back up on some sleep over the last 30 years you might have missed, right? Yeah. Uh, well, this guy obviously is taking care of this next question, but you need to think about what you're going to do for exercise. You don't want to just sit on the couch all day, watch TV, and eat tuna fish out of a can. <laughs> no, absolutely. Absolutely. We have, a, we have a lot of clients. And again, we're very, very blessed where our firm's been around a long time. And we've you know had a lot of clients that have been with us for, for very, very long periods of time. And so to see how a lot of them have aged over the last, you know, 5, 10, 15, maybe 20 years plus of being with our firm, it is rather, you know, a miracle to see how some of them have aged where they've just, they they look the same, they act the same, and they walk the same as they did 5, 10, 15, 20 plus years ago. Um, One thing I have noticed, and I'm no health expert, right? I'm not here giving any medical advice. This shows more about financials. But I will say, I have seen a lot more of the people that stay active, right? Maybe it's, you know, husband and wife take walks together. They maybe do a gym class. They might play pickleball. They might golf, whatever, whatever it is, right? Those of them that have stayed up and active and very engaged in things of exercise, they have typically stayed, you know, their body has stayed very active as they've aged, right? And so uh, some of the ones I've seen where maybe they had some issues with, you know, back pain or knee pain or whatever it is, and they weren't able to, to move around as much or just didn't want to anymore. Um, I've definitely seen them in some cases age a little bit more rapidly. And so I definitely think exercise is one of the biggest important things when you're transitioning to retirement. Yes, financials and all that's important, but also keeping that healthy mind and that healthy body going to keep some gas in the tank to go another 20 or 30 years. Yeah, well, Tom Petty once said, never, never slow down, never grow old. Yep. <laughs> Great song. <laughs> yeah. Think about how much you want to travel uh, in your retirement and where you want to travel. You know, I guess make sure you're on the same page. 
Yeah, absolutely. Like you said, kind of charting out where you where you kind of identify where you want to go. Uh, how how much do you want to spend? What what do you think that budget's going to look like on those trips and things like that? Are we doing one a year, five a year, right? <laughs> one every other year. What what is it going to look like? And kind of understanding that, I think it's super important. And and one of the things you know, a lot of people say, well, Logan, how the heck does this pertain to financial planning, right? Uh, one thing I always tell clients is when you're identifying what you want your retirement plan to look like. Um, you're also identifying what you want your budget to look like, what you want your travel plans to look like, and what you want to do with your time, right? It's all it's all wrapped into one thing, right? The financial, and we call it the income plan, right? The income plan is really the gasoline to the retirement plan, right? All of this stuff is great. Exercise, travel, food, all of it's great. But if you don't have a good income plan, that the, you don't have enough gas in the tank to keep it going, um, it doesn't mean much, right? So we definitely want to start with a solid income plan. But really why, as an advisor, I ask a lot of these questions and take a little bit more of a deeper approach to the, uh, you know, the not just the financial end, but also the emotional end of what we want things to look like in the retirement. It's super important because that helps give a good feel of how this plan is going to unfold over this next 20 years. And again, we want to make sure when we're building a plan that's built to your expectations, it's built to fit your lifestyle, and to also make sure it's built to last the next 20 or 30 years of your retirement. Yeah, a lot of things to think about, that's for sure. And Logan, I'm going to give out the number here in just a second again, but uh, what is that discovery meeting that we talk about all the time? What does that consist of? Yeah, so what, how it works here is it's really really make it as easy as we can on the show where if you, those of you out there are getting closer to retirement, maybe you're 50, 55 years old, maybe you're 60, 65 years old plus, right? And you're at a spot where you're just looking over, maybe you have a 401k, maybe you got an IRA, um, you've gathered some assets, but you're kind of looking at how do I help put together this financial plan or where do I start with looking at an income plan? That's really where our firm comes in as we specialize in retirement planning. So most of our clients are, like I said, are typically approaching retirement or just starting and are looking for a team to help help them put the picture and help put the pieces together for their, re- their retirement plan. And so what you could do is you can call in on the radio show. You're going to leave a message and basically somebody from my office gives you a call back first thing Monday morning and you could schedule a time to do a phone call, a Zoom call, or even come into the office. And uh, you don't meet with anybody else. You actually meet with myself, Logan Sadler, and we actually sit down and go through our discovery process. At the discovery meeting, we ask you, you know, what do you want retirement to look like? Uh, what is your experience with money? Do you, you know, what is your experience with investing? Are you comfortable with it? Uh, what type of uh, solutions and strategies are you interested in? And what also concerns you about the next 20 or 30 years of your retirement plan? And then we help put together a custom retirement plan. Uh, we call it a retirement plan blueprint for you and your family to help get you to and through retirement. 888-823-PLAN. 888-823-PLAN. Hope you've written down that number already, but why not jot it down really quickly and go ahead and call the number right now. 888-823-PLAN. That will be good for you for a discovery meeting, a getting to know your conversation. It's not going to cost you anything at all. Not going to obligate you to do anything beyond that. Uh, wherever you are in Southern California or wherever you listen to this show, call that number and then you can get together with Logan Sadler, talk about your situation. And again, no money changing hands at first there and uh, no obligation at all. No strings attached. 888-823-7526. I'm Ron Stutz along with Logan Sadler and we'll have more coming up in just a moment. Thanks for listening to The Financial Beat. Do you ever find yourself skipping through countless songs trying to find the perfect one? Yeah, we've been there too, and know it can be frustrating. Much like skipping through the countless advertisements from other financial advisors, it can seem like there's so much misinformation. But here on The Financial Beat, you can rest assured we're providing you with the best information possible. So don't push skip on this show, because we have some important information coming up. We're back now with more of The Financial Beat. The beat goes on, as they say. Ron Stutz here along with Logan Sadler, Vice President, Chief Investment Officer at uh, Regary Financial. If you'd like to find out more about Logan and about this show, you can go to financialbeatradio.com, financialbeatradio.com. Remember that when you deal with Regary, you're, you're dealing with a, a, a firm that uh, has great partnerships with local CPAs, attorneys, real estate agents, mortgage lenders, Medicare specialists. Everybody pretty much involved with your your financial life. That way they can offer you comprehensive guidance in all things financial. Uh, call 888-823-PLAN. You can set up a time to have a conversation with Logan Sadler, same person you hear on this show. Hey, Logan, got a, a kind of a crazy fun fact I read about earlier this week, and 
I had no idea of this, and it seems really silly, but did you realize that the official state drink in the state of Nebraska is Kool-Aid? <laughs> no, I was actually pretty uh, pretty curious what you were going to say there, and I, Kool-Aid did catch me off guard, as I'm sure it did a lot of you listening to the show right now. So, no, really? I did not did not know that, Ron. I'm going to write that down as, a, again, another fun fact to uh, bring up at a conversation. That's, it seems kind of silly to me, but, you know, whatever. Whatever floats your boat, as they say. <laughs> well, well, let's talk about mistakes that couples make. A lot of uh, husbands and wives out there listening to the show um, every week and getting husbands and wives on the same page with their retirement plan can often be a real challenge. So uh, I thought today we could talk about some of the things that couples often mess up. Uh, first of all, a lot of, a lot of couples make the wrong choice on how to handle the spousal benefit option mm-hmm. on a pension. Mm-hmm. And why is that so important, the spousal benefit? Yeah, absolutely. There's a lot of different things to look at when you're looking at your retirement plan. And one thing I always say too, Ron, is again, I deal with a lot of people that are maybe widowed or widowers or, or, or married, right? And uh, especially in the marriage, uh, people that have been married for a long time or even maybe even a short time, uh, we all probably understand that we probably don't agree on everything, right? Uh, I know, Ron, you're married, I'm married, and I, I could say 100% of, the, 100% of the time, me and my wife do not agree on everything, right? It's just uh, <laughs> That's for sure, man. That's the understatement of the year. <laughs> it is, right? And I, I can't say 100% very much in this, in, this, in, the, in this industry, right? But I can say that on marriage, right, where we don't always agree. We might have a little bit different of envisionment of how we envision retirement, and uh, that's no different, again, when it comes time to making a lot of these different choices. Now, one thing you had mentioned there about making sure you choose the, uh, the spousal benefit and how to kind of look through those and options, I always tell clients when you're talking about a pension, there is so many different intricate parts of that pension that we want to make sure we understand. And again, I don't expect you to be an expert on this, but definitely bringing it into someone like us where we could analyze all the options and fit them into your financial plan is really the most important. So, what you'll see, Ron, is there might be like a lump sum option, right? Where you could take, um, you know, you could take five hundred thousand dollars right now, and you could walk away, right? And you could invest it yourself, and you're good. There's another option where you could take a payout, right? And they'll say, "We'll give you four thousand dollars a month for as long as you live, but it's a single payout. So meaning, if you pass away, your spouse would get zero. Right um, now, for those of us that are married, uh, that probably w- <laughs> probably would not make the wife or the husband uh, very happy, right? Um, so we want to look at that. The other thing is, there's some of them that maybe are like a seventy five percent survivor. So they'll say instead of the four thousand a month, we're going to give you thirty five hundred a month, and if you pass away, your spouse might still get you know twenty four hundred dollars a month, mm-hmm. right? So at least there's some money there to to replace some income and things if something were to happen to you. And then there's some that might be joint, right? So maybe they're a little bit less than the single, I'm sorry, typically a lot less than the single, a little bit less than that 75% survivor. Um, But how it will work is instead of that, you know, the 4,000 or instead of the 3,500, they might give you 3,000 a month, right? But if something happens to either one of you, that 3,000 a month would continue as long as each of you lives, right? So for some of us, we're taking more uh, up front, but when you look long-term, we might get a lot more out of that pension uh, throughout our retirement. And there's a lot of different, um, you know, there's a lot of different complexities to factor in here when making these choices. It's not just that everybody that's married should take this one or that one, or everyone that's single should take this one or that one. Really, when you're looking at this, you want to analyze how does it fit into your ongoing plan, right? There's there's social security, there's investments, there's all these other things that we want to look at to plug into our retirement plan and life insurance and all that stuff to making sure we understand what is the best option for us uh, long term. And if something happened, you know, how would it how would it affect the overall plan? You know, there's so many questions around social security. It seems like everybody you talk to has Mm -hmm. a bit of a struggle trying to find out exactly when they ought to take social security. And there are lots of different ways to look at it. But uh, some mistakes that uh, couples make revolve around the decisions they have made in coordinating their social security claiming. So, you know, what kind of conversations do you have around that particular subject? Yeah, and you're right on that, Ron, where uh, it's a popular topic, right? A lot of people have questions on it. And uh, it is funny because on our YouTube channel that we do a lot of videos on each week, as we talk about all the time on the show, um, that's always one of the most requested questions or, or topics is, hey, what about this on Social Security? Or what about that on Social Security? Right? Or when's the best time to take it? So definitely, there's a lot of questions out there. And you know, for most of us out there, when we look at our retirement plan, that might be the highest guaranteed income 
that we have in our retirement plan, right? Um, not a lot of us have pensions out there anymore, and we might have a 401k or IRA, but when you look at guaranteed income, there's only really a few places you can get that. One is an annuity, one is Social Security, and one's a pension, right? So for a lot of us, when we look at our Social Security, we need to make sure that we're really analyzing uh, our two situations, right? If you're married, you know what uh, what ages are going to be the best for us to take it, not just for the payment, right? A lot of people look at just a dollar amount, Really, what you want to look at is the overall longevity of the plan, right? So when I was working with a couple just the other day, Ron, where it made a lot of sense for um, for the wife in this situation to take hers at 62, right? Hers was a little bit less. They were, they were going to retire, and we could take hers at 62. But if we let the husband sit till 66 and a half, right? It made sense to where, and when you look at the longevity of their plan, they got probably another hundred or hundred fifty thousand dollars out of Social Security over the longevity of their plan, right? If they lived till age 90 or 92 or whatever age it was, right? So there's a lot of these little intricate parts of Social Security where maybe delaying one or taking one or delaying both of them might make sense. There's also spousal benefits and things like that inside the 401k that a lot of people, I'm sorry, inside Social Security that a lot of people aren't really aware of. So there's a, there's a lot of big questions surrounding that. And that's definitely something when we're looking at our financial plans, we're looking at you know, you might have you know five hundred thousand in your four hundred one k. She might have two hundred thousand in her four hundred one k, and you might each have social security. Now, how can we plug all that in to get the income and the lifestyle that we want in retirement? Yeah, it's so important to have those conversations. Eight 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 two three plan eight 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 two three plan. That is your number to call for Regary Financial. You can set up a time to have a conversation with Logan Sadler about all these questions that we're talking about here today. And, you know, there's so many people who just can't wait to get to retirement, but they don't have really specific conversations, you know, with each other about what they're actually going to do in retirement once they're uh, once they're retired, you know, how they're going to spend their time. I remember hearing about this one couple who came in to see a financial advisor that I know who who, uh, you know, he, he said, what are you guys planning to do in your retirement? And and he right away piped up and said, we want to go visit all the major league ballparks. I want to <laughs> visit every single one of them. And she looked at him like she was crazy. She said, that's not what I want to do in my retirement. What <laughs> she you... probably could care less, right? <laughs> exactly. You know, she could have killed him at that point. So, Oh, yeah. It happens constantly, right? I mean, yeah. and, and, and you, like I said, you could all relate to this, where whether it's not retirement or whether it's going to eat, right? Sometimes I'll say, man, you know, a steak sounds nice. My wife was like, well, pizza sounds better, right? So it's like we're about two opposite sides of the spectrum, right? And, so, and let me guess where you end up going usually. <laughs> yeah, probably to pizza. But you know what's funny is, it's, it's <laughs> yeah, she typically wins in those. Right, but uh, of my course. jokes on her because I could I could eat anything. I love food, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know what you mean, but that happens at my house too. We usually yep. end up doing what she wants to do. Well, uh, we're talking about mistakes that couples make uh, here as you you know think about your road to and through retirement. Uh, a lot of couples out there have a lot of individual accounts. They may have they may have this thing here and this thing over here, but they don't bother to coordinate their individual accounts like four hundred one ks and IRAs to be absolutely certain that their combined assets are actually working together. And that's one of the reasons that you need to have a a financial advisor like Logan Sadler who can help you put all that together. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that that looking at the full picture, like we always talk about, there's so many puzzle pieces out there, right? You got 401ks, an IRA, maybe a Roth, maybe a brokerage account, Social Security, maybe a pension, right? Uh, you got taxes. You got all this little things to kind of piece together, and it can be very overwhelming for some people, and and maybe not overwhelming, but maybe you don't feel like you're kind of doing it to the best of your abilities or to the best of what your situation might look like. And I've seen these situations, you know, almost every time when a client comes in, it's very rare that and it does happen, but it is rare where clients come in and say, I have everything perfectly organized. Here's where everything's at. Here's how it's invested. And here's our risk. Here's, you know, it's very rare. Um, but it's funny. I was just thinking of a story again, Ron, the, the other day where um, I had a client where they had, you know, four or five different accounts. They had an IRA, a 401k here, you know, a 401k there, an IRA here. And they said, you know, we're very, very well diversified. We have multiple accounts at different, you know, firms like a Vanguard or a Fidelity or TD or, or Schwab, whoever. Mm-hmm. And it was funny. So we, of course, do a full risk analysis as well as what we call an asset allocation, where we kind of see where is everything invested. So it was funny because, you know, they said this one's in a 2023 uh, fund, which is, you know, uh, very diversified. And, this, and these ones are in bond funds, right? So we're di- very diversified. So by the time doing all the risk analysis, which I knew off the top, but of course I'm going to run the run the reports and make sure everything lines up. 
And basically, the, the stuff that they held in that 2023 fund was basically the exact same they held at this other account, right? Where it was all in bonds, right? Because those of you that don't know, as you get closer and closer to retirement, in those target date funds, they just move more and more into bonds, right? Mm-hmm. So it was funny where they thought they had all this diversification, but when I actually was able to show them the holdings, they held almost the exact same bond funds in three different accounts, yeah. right? So what happens if bonds went up? Well, their accounts did well. Well, if bonds went down, well, all, all three of those accounts didn't do well, right? So, but they were all doing exactly the same. So I think it's very important to understand, you know, really working with a professional, identifying where all these accounts are, sometimes having them in five or six or seven different places or with different advisors might not even be the best way to diversify it, right? So as an advisor, I always tell clients, with me understanding the full picture, where your accounts are, what the retirement plan goal is, what your risk tolerance and all that stuff is, what our tax structure is going to look like this year, next year, the following year, really allows the advisor to give you a little bit better of an input and a better picture to put together for your financial plan. We're talking about couples here, and you know how you say, uh, sometimes opposites attract. Uh, some, some in some couples maybe, and and this can be reversed. But let's just say that the the guy is just really a, a gambler. He would like to spend every weekend in Vegas if he could, mm-hmm. you know. And oh, yeah. then and then his wife is just you know she's very conservative and does not like risk. And and maybe they're not managing risk in a way that both spouses are comfortable with. And you know we talk so many times about how you need to decrease your risk as you get closer and closer to retirement because you can't afford to to have yeah. a big loss. But I know you've certainly met a lot of people who fall into that category. Yeah, absolutely. I, you know, I was again. I was just doing. Uh, we meet with a lot of people, and I was just going through a client the other day where we were going over the re- uh, risk review. And again, everybody that comes into our office, especially for our, uh, coming on board with our firm, uh, we run what's called the risk report. So I take all of your current statements and everything like that, and we run a full risk report of you know if these different situations were to happen, how would your accounts react, right? And uh, as you can imagine, Ron, they're sometimes uh, shocked of how things might work out, right? Mm-hmm. So. It's funny because the other day, you know, I was asking a husband and wife, and typically the husband might be more aggressive, but in this situation, it was the exact opposite, right? The one client goes, the, 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 the man was like, you know what? I just, you know, if I made two or 3%, I would be happy, right? I'm just kind of over the volatility of the market. I feel like my accounts go way up, then way down. And right, so he was like, he was just, I'm kind of at a point where I just want to be as conservative as possible. I want to look at maybe annuities for safety or, or CDs or treasuries or something just to kind of uh, take out the volatility, right? And I said, okay, perfect. So I'm, I said, what type of loss would you be comfortable with in a bad market type scenario, right? He goes, man, no more than five or 10%. He was at a spot where he was just very, very uh, wanting to shift to conservative. And it was funny because I shifted over to the wife and she was like, well, you know, that, that doesn't sound great at all to me, right? <laughs> She's like, we're at a point where we need this to grow. I think, you know, we could take a little bit more risk. We could do this differently. And it was funny because exactly two opposite opinions, right? Yeah, yeah. And the nice part is, is that's okay, right? We don't have to agree on everything. And that's part of what a good financial advisor should be able to bring to the table is understanding what each of your goals are and trying to fit that as best as possible into your overall plan. Because you sometimes can't have money that's more aggressive and can't have money that's more conservative to balance out and meet that you know equation of what we call that perfect fit, right? Uh, that perfect balance into your retirement plan. And again, that's what working with a financial advisor can really do for you is not only you know go over the, the statistics and and you know, the, the returns and the risk reports and all that stuff, but really helping make sure that your retirement plan reflects what you and your spouse, or maybe just you, are trying to accomplish throughout your retirement plan by looking at how much income are we going to need, right? Where's the income going to come from? How is our estate plan going to be set up? If something happens to us, where do our assets go? Tax planning, right? That's one of the biggest things when we look at retirement is how our taxes going to play a part over the next 20 or 30 years. Are taxes high right now? Or are they going to be higher down the road, right? So by putting all of that stuff together to create what we call a comprehensive retirement roadmap is what Gary Financial does. And again, what you get when you call into that uh, discovery meeting, come in and uh, sit down with myself where we go over your full retirement plan and get you on your way to get to and through retirement. 888-823-PLAN, 888-823-PLAN, your number to call if you'd like to have a conversation with Logan Sadler about your situation when it comes to getting to and through retirement. Remember, Regary Financial has two convenient offices, one in Hammett, one in 
Ryan Redlands. Of course, Logan Sadler is a person you will actually sit down and have a conversation with him. You get to know him. He gets to know you, and you move on from there. There's no cost and no obligation for this conversation, by the way. 888-823-PLAN is your number to call to make it happen. I'm Ron Stutz along with Logan Sadler, and we'll have more coming up in just a moment. Thanks for listening to The Financial Beat. Are you tired of feeling like taxes are out of your control? Take charge of your financial future with Logan Sadler's 2023 Guide to Tax Planning. This comprehensive resource is more than just a collection of tax tips. It can help you optimize your Social Security, retirement savings, and investments. And with the help of Regary Financial and Insurance, you can rest assured that you're making the right decisions. Download the guide today and start taking control of your financial future. Just text the word ADVICE to the number 21000 and get the guide for free. Just text ADVICE to 21000. It's getting to know you time. You're listening to the Financial Beat with Logan Sadler, often imitated but never duplicated. And I'm proud to say that uh, I get a chance to be on this show with Logan every single week. And hey, hey, Logan, a lot of folks out there want to get to know you a little bit better and uh, maybe haven't gotten around to making that uh, phone call to your office and setting up a discovery meeting, but uh, might just be curious. If you could live anywhere in the world, where would it be? Man, that's hard. Anywhere in the world. That's a tough one. You know, it's funny is me and my wife really, we visited a couple different times. We really like uh, Nashville area in Tennessee. Yeah. Um, I would say it'd probably be like, you know, it seems like a good spot in the outskirts over there somewhere to to raise a family and do, do those types of family oriented things. But in the world, that's such, I haven't been everywhere. So I'm going to say so far Nashville, but I'm sure there's some other places that would come up that I really enjoyed, but that might be one, maybe, maybe Florida or somewhere like yeah. that too. I, you know, I don't know. That's a, that's a hard one. I've been in Nashville a couple of times myself and you know, I love it there. So yeah, yeah I could definitely see myself uh, retiring there or, or moving there at some point down the road, but yeah, it's, it's on the wish list. <laughs> there you go, folks. You've gotten to know Logan Satter a little a little bit better and we'll be back with more in a moment it seems like today there are so many places to get your music with new streaming services popping up left and right it can leave you wondering where's the best place to start it's a lot like financial planning it seems like everyone has something to say when it comes to your plan if you're looking for a financial advisor who's willing to listen to your needs and goals then call Regary financial they take their fiduciary responsibilities seriously to help you make decisions that are in your best interest. So call today to start a conversation. 888-823-PLAN. That's 888-823-7526. Does it feel like you and your financial advisor aren't on the same page? Not, Not quite my tempo. Were you rushing or were you dragging? Logan and the team at Regary Financial can stay in tune and on rhythm with you. Keep listening to The Financial Beat. You're listening to The Financial Beat, and the beat goes on. 888-823-PLAN is your number to call if you'd like to get in touch with Logan Sadler, the star of this show. He is the Vice President and Chief Investment Officer at Regary Financial. Two convenient locations in Southern California, Hemet and also Redlands. 888-823-PLAN is your number to call. Time to get some questions answered, some questions that have come in from our listeners and uh, here in our, we call it the mailbag section, we could call it the uh, request line segment of the show as well, because Logan gets questions in a variety of ways. But first question today is from Mike in Redlands. And Mike says, Logan, I just got a letter along with a packet of about 30 pages telling me that a pension plan from an old job is now eligible to be taken as a lump sum. I can't possibly comprehend all the details contained in the 30 pages so what should I be paying attention to here? <laughs> yeah, great question. Thanks, Mike, for writing in. And and uh, yeah, we talked about this briefly here in the earlier segments on today's show. But uh, yeah, that's one of those things that could be very, very confusing for most people. You're going to have a lump sum option. You're probably going to have a monthly option. And really what you want to do is pay attention to um, what are some of the details in the lump sum option. And also... I would highly, highly recommend anybody out there that gets a lump sum option or even any type of pension election, you want to make sure you're meeting with the financial advisor to go over how are some of those scenarios different, uh, which one's better for you, as well as if you took the lump sum, that's great, right? Now you have $200,000 or a million dollars or whatever it is. 
What are you going to do with it, right? How is it going to create income for you like that pension would have? And what are some of the best places to replace income? So I think it's super important, Mike, when you're at this point where you want to make sure, give us a call. I'd be happy to kind of sit down with you. We can go over the whole packet with you and summarize it in some simple terms because, again, I understand those pages can be, uh, the, the, not pages, I would say dictionary, right? It could be rather long and lengthy. Really? And uh, that's exactly what we specialize in where we help go through that packet, help explain it to you where you're going to understand it, and also tell you some options of where we think uh, might be the best election for you to pick. Mike, glad you asked the question. The number one more time to call uh, Logan Sadler and get a conversation going with him about this particular situation. 888-823-PLAN. Next question here is from Chrissy in Temecula. Chrissy says, my parents left their entire estate to me because they felt that my brother wouldn't be able to be responsible with it. But we had sort of an unspoken understanding that I would make sure he's taken care of. I'm told that I can't give him large sums of money without incurring tax issues. So what's the best way to take care of him? Yeah, that's a uh, that's a complex situation there. And, uh, you know, good for you for, for still wanting to do the right thing and all that stuff in, in your situation. And one thing I always tell clients is there is some very specific gifting rules and things like that that might apply. Also, you probably have different types of money that was left behind, right? Some of it might be 401k money, which is taxed a little differently, and there's some rules that will apply there. Uh, some of it might be house sales or rental income or uh, you know cash in the bank or a brokerage account. All of that might have a little bit different of a, of a, of a way that where we can gift money. And I think it's super important. One thing we do is we believe in having a good team. So we actually work with a lot of different CPAs and, and tax professionals where we could help loop into the process of what are some of the best gifting strategies, how much are we wanting to gift, what's the overall goal, and as an advisor, figuring out how each of these investments might be taxed a little bit differently to figure out the best approach for you and also your brother. So definitely, uh, that would take a lot of peeling back on, on the onion, I'll say. So give us a call and I'd be happy to kind of loop you through the process and also kind of bring in to, uh, to it if needed some professionals to help guide us a little bit further. Chrissy, uh, call that number today and set up a time to talk with Logan because it's very important you make the right decisions on all of this. Uh, last question today is from Ben in Riverside. Ben says, I have an MBA and I understand investments well, but I've always handled my portfolio myself instead of having any professional help and I've always done well. And your honest opinion, is there really any reason for me to work with an advisor? <laughs> Yeah. No, great question. Yeah, exactly. I can't wait to hear what you have to say about this. No, great question. And you know, one thing I always tell people is there is some people out there that have, you know, very, uh, they're very smart. They're very uh, in the know about investments, the economy, all of that stuff. Right. And they, and they probably could do pretty well on their own by creating a financial plan. Um, with that said, I, I always tell people the value of having, of having an advisor is is really, really hard to measure, right? A lot of people go, oh, well, I'm going to pay you 1% or 2% or a planning fee or whatever it is, right? How do I know I'm going to get that back in return? That, that's That's really what a lot of people's questions are about using an advisor, as well as what if I don't want someone telling me what to do with my money and things like that, right? One of the things I always say is, you know, you can do a lot yourself. You have access to stocks, you have access to bonds, you have access to cash alternatives, a lot of different investments where you could probably do pretty well. But you probably don't have access to structured notes, right? Structured notes can be a great asset class for creating income or for diversification. You probably don't have access to private equity or private equity real estate REITs. Probably don't have access to annuities for income, safety, and some alternative investing, right? So there's a lot of different, uh, or insurance products like IULs for tax-free income and things like that in retirement. So there's, there's access to a lot of things that most people don't have, especially if you're doing it yourself, because you probably need a license to do those. So it allows you to have access to stocks and bonds and mutual funds and things like that, which are very important and can be good in a retirement plan. But it doesn't give you access to everything out there, which might be needed depending on your situation to help create that official, that, that, that you know, comprehensive retirement plan, as well, not having the guidance and the, and the person or the team behind you to help making sure we're looking at this, not just very, very micro, but also very macro, right? Making sure we're looking at not just the small things, but also the big things and making sure we're understanding things like taxes, right? Things like Roth conversions, estate planning, all of those other things that can be a lot more complex than just, yeah, this is a good stock. It's done well, right? Um, and so I think that's a lot of the value that a financial advisor and a financial team should be able to bring to the table. Yes, you should have access to probably some more investment 
alternatives and things you might not be able to use on your own, but also having someone to help guide you, give you the counsel, and making sure we're looking at some of those other items that sometimes get missed in a retirement plan that can really make a difference or make or break a plan uh, throughout your retirement. So that's some of the value, I think, Ben, that an advisor can offer. And that's why we offer, for those of you listening, that complimentary discovery meeting where you can come into our office, come in, let's sit down or via Zoom, and we can kind of go through what your situation is, what you're trying to accomplish. And I can actually put together a full retirement roadmap for you of showing you, here's some things I think we should do differently. Here's how we would do things if we were your advisor. Here's maybe the savings you might have. Here's the taxes we might want to look at. And all of that into one financial plan to show you the value that Regary Financial and our team could bring to your family's retirement. 888-823-PLAN is your number to call. 888-823-7526. Call that number today and arrange a time to have a conversation with Logan Sadler. 888-823-PLAN. Great questions today from Ben, Chrissy, and Mike, and a lot of other folks out there may have questions as well. You can uh, you also send your questions by calling this number if you like. 888-823-PLAN. There may be a lot of questions that uh, have been concerning you for a while when it comes to the topic of retirement, getting to and through it. And uh, that's some of the things that you're going to be able to talk about in that discovery meeting with Logan Sadler. You get to know him. He gets to know you, finds out what's important to you, and uh, all of that. That's the way it works. 888-823-PLAN. I'm Ron Stutz along with Logan Sadler. Logan, it's been a lot of fun today. Uh, Good talk. Yeah, I appreciate it, Ron. Always a great time. And appreciate each and every one of you listeners that tune into the show each week. Or maybe it was your first time. Appreciate you stopping by. And we'll see you again here next week. Join us again next time for the next edition of the Financial Beat with Logan Sadler, Rick Airy Financial. Regary Financial and Insurance Services, Inc. and BD Financial Group, Inc. are separate and independent entities. The information provided in this presentation is presented for educational and informational purposes only and does not constitute financial, investment, tax, or legal advice, nor does it constitute an offer or solicitation to buy or sell any securities.